Good morning. Welcome home to Mailer's Landing. I am taking care of some odds and ends today. Bill and I got those raspberries wrangled yesterday. And today, I think we're gonna put up the bird netting because stuff is starting to get ripe back there. Last year, we lost every last berry to the birds, um, which was kind of cool. I mean, we are, we are lousy with birds and I just love it. Which is also to say there are some wild berries growing that we are not going to net and we're not going to net them on purpose because we want to be able to feed our friends. Did I tell you we had a hummingbird come and visit our, uh, our porch beds? We did. So we got a hummingbird feeder and we're hoping that we see a return on that. They're just, they're just lovely. Look how pretty. Look how pretty they are. These are those King Tut purple peas that I have just been raving about all this time. Just gorgeous. Look at that. And some of them are a little stripy, you'll see. I even had some come off of those vines that were just green. Look, look, like this one, just green but all ripe and ready to go. So pulled it down. I don't see a difference between it and the uh, purple ones. You will notice they are the same cultivar and we can tell because they have these little purple edges up here. So they just did not come in purple. Happens. See the, the purple edges on these? Not bad, about a cup's worth. I'm gonna get these blanched and into the freezer bag with the other peas, with our pocket harvest. But for sure that bird netting is priority number one today. So I'll see you outside in a little bit. Today's the day we're gonna get some bird netting up on the berry patch today. Let me show you what's going on. There's so much fruit on these branches. I think these are the golden raspberries that I planted. How nice. I believe these are all wild black raspberries. The majority of these I didn't plant. They were here when we got here, so I don't really know what they all are, but there's a lot. Sitting here pondering what we're gonna do about the bird netting and how we're going to do it and watched a cat bird come in and graze. <laughs> so we're definitely going to do it. <laughs> that is no longer a question because cat birds. Um, there are so many good birds here. We've got cat birds, robins, cedar wax wings, cardinals. cardinals. We've got nesting pairs Orioles. of cardinals. Mm -hmm. Sparrows, chickens, finches. finches. We saw that hummingbird. Swallows, hummingbirds, woodpeckers. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of birds. We have a lot of birds. <laughs> birds like to eat berries, because who doesn't like to eat berries? Berries are delicious. Uh, so we're gonna net this thing up, and we've been, over the last three or four days, we've been trying to figure out how we're gonna net it up. Bill's got a solution. We're gonna use the fencing for electric cattle fencing as the supports because they're heavy duty plastic they've got some flex to it and they've also got a big spike on the bottom which we can use to help hold the netting in place simple <laughs> <laughs> so we've got some bird netting it is seven feet wide by a hundred feet long and what we're hoping to do is if you look back there we've put the trellising up what we're hoping to do is anchor it from the top of the trellising do a pass on the outside do a pass on the inside and anchor them down with these modified t-post electric fence doohickey thingamabobbers and uh here we go <laughs> to battle
Oh, so that was a productive 40 minutes. Oh my goodness. Um, it's like 90 something degrees out here. We are both sweating bullets. I think we're gonna head into the house and do anything else uh, <laughs> until it gets a little cooler out here and the sun goes down. But the bird netting is up and uh, think good thoughts. I would love to have a, a few pots of jam out of this. That would just make my heart sing. So here we go. Here goes nothing. <laughs> well done. Yay, jam. <sighs> Ever have one of those days? Just challenging today. Dishwasher broke. The rooster pulled a bunch of feathers out of one of our hens and we're gonna have to bring her in and get her cleaned up. She's gonna be separated for a few days from the flock. Um, poor Cookie, poor, poor Cookie. Uh, Zuzu pulled a bunch of feathers out of the back of her head and she's bloodied. So we're gonna bring her in for a couple of days. Bill is upstairs building a kennel for us right now as we speak. And we're gonna bring Cookie in and get her cleaned up. She's probably gonna spend about three, four days indoors. We're gonna bring another bird along, keep her company. Poor baby. So let's get that on. So Cookie here has a pretty significant boo-boo on the back of her neck. And I'm gonna spare you looking at that because it ain't pretty. Pick your head up, pick your head up, say hello. I'm gonna get her in the sink and wipe it down with some water and then some hydrogen peroxide. And then we've got some spray stuff, some antibacterial spray stuff that's gonna go on her. Yeah. Oh, that is a mess. Do this and then I'm gonna do a little bit of hydrogen peroxide. Yeah. Uh, she's, okay. Oh, he really beat you up, honey, huh? That's a good girl. All right. And I'm just using a 3% hydrogen peroxide solution. We don't want to use anything stronger on anything living. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you poor thing. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is that better? Poor duckling. Well, she's not a duckling. Poor chicken. We're going to bring in Betsy to keep her company and get them situated in the, the big kennel that Bill just built upstairs. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. And uh, they're going to be back in the guest room for three or four days until she's feeling better. Betsy first. So they'll be in for a few days. They're having a spa weekend. <laughs> and uh, we will take a look at that wound over the, the course of the next few days, keep it clean and keep them separated. And then once everybody's looking well, back out to the coop. And uh, one thing before the other, one thing at a time. Here we go.
been a couple of days. Cookie is still inside. Betsy is back in the flock, um, mostly because turns out when you huh, coop her up, um, she gets really bitey. And I didn't want to encourage that behavior. Bitey Betsy is back outside <laughs> and we're just looking after Cookie right now. Um, but it looks like she's going to be okay. She's healing up really, really well. And I'm hoping by next week she'll be back outside. We tried to get her reintegrated when we sent Betsy back. And um, the other birds weren't having it. They could still see the wound and they ganged up on her. So she was out there for like a minute. She's back indoors. We're waiting for the feathers to fill back in. And uh, so we're looking at another week. As soon as she's ready, she's going back out, but she's being a pretty good patient. Please root for my chickens. Um, oh, this flock, so much chicken drama. As soon as she's got those feathers back, we'll start the process of getting her back in with the flock. And um, I know that process is supposed to take a few days. So here we go. Please let me know in the comments down below if you have any good strategies for reintegrating birds that have been separated back into the flock. Um, if you've got any go-to chicken first aid things that I should be doing, just let me know. This bird, this bird is so ready to go back outside. Oh, sweetheart. So thanks for hanging out with me and Cookie and Bill on this roller coaster of a few days. We're gonna get this bird back to health and uh, we'll catch you up soon. Take care. I'm the worst. This is terrible, Cookie. It's just awful.